Hi everyone and welcome to another quick tip. I've listened to some of you and uh, it seems like the topic of the adaptive sampling is still around and uh, I try to get more specific information about this in that quick tip. So in this case that means the renderer is adapting to noise. Now, first of all, let me give you a visual example. And um, luckily, Octane has that built in right away. So let's restart the render here. And you can see that it starts out really noisy, as we expect from a progressive renderer, and then gets noise-free and more noise-free as the time progresses. Now, you can also see, if I stop that here, that we already get areas that have no noise at all anymore. Now, those areas don't really need any more attention than what you've already got. And this is the reason why there is an adaptive sampling. If I turn on adaptive sampling, you get this noise tab, or what you want to call it. And if I go on here and restart our rendering again, you can see that it starts out really noisy. This is the noise view of the scene. Now, as the time progresses and we reach our minimum samples here, it gets this green parts inside of the render. And those parts are actually parts that are now shut off from active rendering. That means that there's no samples being generated for those parts. And if we wait a little bit longer, you can see that bigger parts of the scene will get green, as they do now. That means that our algorithm in here has detected that all those parts that are embarked in green now are underneath a certain noise threshold. That means if I switch back to our main rendering, those parts don't need additional rendering. That also means that all of you GPU power will allocate it on those parts that are still noisy. So those parts that are not green. And therefore, your rendering gets noise-free faster. Having explained the fundamentals of that, let's go over the settings. Now we have the noise threshold. And let me switch over to our PDF here. The noise threshold determines how different certain samples in each pixel can be until the pixel is turned off from rendering. Now, this can be done in a lot of different ways, but I guess it's done in Octane per iteration. That means it will look at the pixel values in the iteration before, and it will look at the pixel values in the next iteration. And if it changes too drastically, it still will still be active, but if its changes are lower than the threshold, it will become inactive. Now let's switch back here. To get a stable result, you can uh, base that algorithm on. So you compare samples. You have to first get to a minimum sample amount, because if you only have one sample per pixel and then get a second sample per pixel, of course, there's a huge difference between the colors in the pixels. You can see that it's really noisy in the beginning. So there's nothing to base off of in the beginning. So uh, with that setting here, you say to the render, just keep on sampling till every pixel has 256 samples in that case, and then start comparing those. The next value uh, isn't that clear to me, but it's... Uh, Basically, if you are using the camera exposure a lot, so if you are going to making your scene brighter or darker based on the camera exposure, uh, you can adjust that expected exposure value too. That basically changes the algorithm uh, to adapt better to what you're seeing on screen rather than sticking to the natural values that come back from the pixels themselves, which then if you turn up and down the um, exposure on your camera, don't match what you see on screen anymore. Now, the group pixels is uh, standard, it's set to two by two, and that means only if a cluster of two by two, speaking four pixels, determined noise three 
then this block of pixels will be turned off from rendering. So uh, there's also a 4x4, which I really like. Uh, basically what this means, and let's uh, switch one more time, is now we have the 2x2 two two pixels here. So that means if one pixel is classified as noise free, nothing will change. It will still render on until all four pixels are classified as noise free. And that helps avoiding errors. This isn't perfect because what in a world is really perfect. So um, to get a more stable result, we can use four by four pixels and that would look like this. So we get four by four pixels and only if a block of four by four pixels, all of them are classified as noise free, it will then turn off that block from rendering. And that essentially um, minimizes errors where one pixel would be turned off even though it is still noisy and therefore we can have a better assumption of the situation. So how do you set this up? That is rather easy. Um, we first start by turning off the adaptive sampling since we want to see how many samples we actually need to clean all noise from the scene. So also you have to increase your uh, maximum samples to a very high amount. In this case I used 20,000. Now you can render the overall scene, but you could also use the render region to define an area where you know that area is especially noisy, like that one below here. So since rendering the whole scene takes a long time, let's make a render area in that lower corner there. And also make sure you start from scratch. And be sure to remember that number here when it becomes noise free. So it's still a little bit noisy. Still. Still. And I would say about maybe 10 or so thousand it becomes noise free. Maybe make it 16,000 for convenience. So yeah, that's about right, 16,000. It's got noise three. Okay, so we can do that. Go in here and set it to 16,000. So we now, with that sample amount, the whole picture will be noise free for us. But of course, if I turn off the render region and restart the rendering again, we now get a render time that hits like, I don't know, it will um, jump around a bit, but uh, I guess uh, seven to 10 minutes or something like that. And that's quite a long time for such a render. This is exactly where the adaptive sampling comes in. Because with the sample amount that we set before in the samples per pixel, we leave that as is because we know that there are some parts of the picture that are really grainy and need that amount of samples, but there's other parts of the picture as this floor back there that's already clean at 748 samples per pixel. So what we need to do is turn on adaptive sampling and then let it render again. Now, of course, since it needs to uh, get the minimum samples before it starts its calculations and then carries on with turning off more and more pixels of the image that are already noise free. The initial timing is the same as before, but as longer as it renders, the more pixels will be turned off from active rendering and therefore the time goes down in the end. Now, if you look at our noise, there's already a huge portion of our, uh, of our screen is green. So we have a green screen essentially. And with that, the render time will go down. Now we are at seven minutes now. And you can see um, when I leave that running that essentially we are ending up with a lot less render time than 10 minutes or eight minutes as before because in every progression of the samples, more and more parts of the image will become green and therefore the rest of the GPU power is allocated to the parts that really need it as we have determined that edge down there. 
So I paused the rendering and let it finish rendering. So instead of seven to eight minutes, we got it in three minutes 30 or 33 if you want to be precise. So we got our rendering in uh, half, uh, more a third of the time. And if I swap to our noise, you can see that almost all of it is green, except some very small portions of here, which is the area we determined to pick our noise from, which seems to have been a very good decision. So in general, the settings that are preset here are very good, so you don't need to change them very often. Sometimes, if you have still problems with noise on some areas that are already green, you have to lower that threshold. The other way around, if you have areas that get very clean and are not turned off from rendering, you can um, raise the threshold. So put 0.04 in there or something like that. And I think that concludes my quick tip. It's gotten rather long again, but I hope you like it that way. So around 10 minutes or so. Uh, hopefully that uh, leads one or the other of you to understand what the adaptive sampling really is doing and what you can do with it. Uh, one small note on the end. Adaptive sampling is only really useful if you have areas that are noisier than others. If you have a very uniform conversions of your scene, then you don't need adaptive sampling because all of your pixels will converge at the same time and become noise-free at the same time, so you can stop the rendering there. While when you have renders that have noisy parts and parts that are already cleaned up, then it becomes very essential and very useful to use it. All right, that's it for today again. Thank you for watching and until next time. Cheers.